Good morning. Diplomacy derailed. Why can't the U.N. agree on how to deal with Iran and its nuclear program this morning? We'll ask Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice. Texas twisters, at least three dead, others injured, and homes destroyed when severe storms ripped through the Lone Star State. And if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. After a cross-country journey, the fat man walking arrives in New York, New York. And he's walking right into our studio today, Wednesday, May 10th, 2006. From NBC News, this is Today with Katie Curry and Matt Lauer. Live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza. And welcome to today on this Wednesday morning, everyone. I'm Katie Couric. And I'm Matt Lauer. This showdown with Iran over its nuclear program is getting more and more difficult. The U.S. wanted the United Nations to agree to a resolution imposing sanctions against Iran if that country doesn't halt its uranium enrichment program, but the Chinese and the Russians are standing in the way. That's right, Matt. And today's strong words from the Iranian president saying concerns over that country's nuclear program are, quote, a big lie. We'll talk about this standoff and much more when Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice joins us live in just a moment. Then another crisis facing this administration, those soaring gas prices. A poll out today says only 13 percent of Americans approve of the way President Bush is managing the situation right now. And now many people are trying to save money at the pump by turning to hybrid vehicles. But there's a big catch. They're getting harder and harder to find. We'll have more on that story as well. Katie, also we'll have an incredible survivor story in Southern California. Hikers who were saved by a backpack that was actually left behind by a man who disappeared appeared in the wilderness a year ago. And then will these guys ever learn Dateline went to Fort Myers, Florida at the request of authorities there to help catch suspected sexual predators. And once again, the men kept on showing up. Hey, man, I don't Some want really weird and strange stories in this one. All that, plus we'll talk to American Idol Simon Cowell about who he thinks has a shot at making it all the way to the championship. But first, Matt, that face-off with Iran over its nuclear program. NBC's chief foreign affairs correspondent, Andrea Mitchell, has the very latest developments. Andrea, good morning. Good morning, Katie. Today, Iran's president called Western criticism of his country's nuclear program a big lie after the U.S. and Europe started working on a package of economic incentives and threatened sanctions to get Iran to abandon and nuclear enrichment. This after Russia and China blocked strong UN action against Iran. <laughs> Failure at the UN, deadlock after four months of talks. No agreement on a UN resolution threatening Iran with sanctions if it continues its nuclear program. Now, Iran can have a civil nuclear program. No one is disputing that. They can have scientific progress. No one is disputing that. Iran helped derail the diplomacy partly by a last-minute overture to President Bush from Iran's president. A letter criticizing U.S. policy in Iraq, defending Iran's right to develop nuclear technology, and quoting the Bible and the Koran to appeal to Mr. Bush on religious grounds. Asking, quote, if the prophets Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Ishmael, Joseph, and Jesus Christ were with us today, how would they have judged such behavior as the U.S. policy in Iraq and the Middle East? The president rejected the letter out of hand and will not reply nor agree to direct talks. It's very important for the Iranians to know they will be isolated in the world. But experts say the letter could put the U.S. on the defensive. It already has had an impact in the sense that there is now more divisions between the Allies and the Russians and the Chinese about how to move forward because there is some degree of Iranian flexibility. In fact, there is already pressure on the U.S. to reconsider and open direct talks with Iran. But administration officials say U.S. policy is firm, that Iran must be isolated until it gives up its nuclear ambitions. Matt? All right, Andrea, thanks so much. Andrea Mitchell in Washington this morning, and we're very happy to welcome Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice. Madam Secretary, good morning. Good nice to have to you here. Nice to be with you. Thank you. You've said that the U.N. Security Council is in total agreement that Iran cannot have a nuclear weapon, and yet it appears they will not vote on a resolution, or at least pass a resolution, imposing a correspondence the wasn't the correspondence even the opening of a door let me read you what the former iranian ambassador france said on on tuesday the letter could have been a turning point in relations but quote rice squandered the opportunity with what he called a hasty reaction this gives a pretext to those in Iran to oppose reestablishment of ties with America. Uh, this was not a letter that seriously addressed any of the concerns uh, that the international community has. It's a pleasure to be with you, Matt. Thank Thanks. you. It's 13 after the hour. Let's head over to the news desk now. Ann Curry has the other headlines of the morning, Ann. 
Good morning. Thanks a lot, Matt. Good morning, everybody. Also in the news this morning, officials in Texas are assessing the damage from deadly storms that hit during the night, killing at least three people north of Dallas. The storms hit Collin County, Texas, especially hard. Well, NBC's Don Teague is in Westminster this morning, Westminster, Texas. Don, good morning. Good morning, Ann. We're here in Westminster at the Volunteer Fire Department, which has been set up as a command post, and you're right, authority this morning. Thank you, Don, for that report. In Florida, wildfires are still causing havoc. At least three homes have been destroyed and some fires are still burning. NBC's Michelle Kaczynski is in New Smyrna Beach, Florida this morning with more on this story. Michelle, good morning. Good morning, Anne. The smoke is still thick enough this morning to cause highway shutdowns, and there are still hot spots in some of the more than 100 wildfires across Florida that tore through more than 20,000 acres and several homes. We expect more fires. Mm. And all right, Michelle Kaczynski this morning. Thank you, Michelle. Today in Iraq, gunmen attacked a bus near Bakuba, then planted a bomb that exploded when rescue workers arrived. At least 11 Iraqis were killed in that attack. Overseas markets were down a bit today in Tokyo and London after Wall Street's 55 point gain on Tuesday. The Dow closed at its second highest level ever. Today, the Fed meets again on interest rates, and many economists expect another quarter point increase. Some scary moments in China on Tuesday. As a crowded bus flipped over on a major highway, the accident caught on videotape. Amazingly, however, everyone on the bus survived. And last night, pop star Britney Spears confirmed a rumor to David Letterman saying, yes, she's pregnant again. And minor league baseball has suspended Delman Young for 50 games without pay. Young threw his bat at an umpire last month, striking him in the chest. It is believed to be the longest suspension in minor league history. 717. Let's turn back to Katie Matt now this morning. Just not acceptable. Yeah. No way, other way to put it. All right. Thank you, Ann. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Ann. <laughs> Nothing Appreciate personal. That. Yeah, sorry. Anyway, Al Roker is here with a check of the forecast. Yeah. How's it looking? Well, unfortunately, they, they, we had that severe weather yesterday in Texas. Well, that area is moving to the east, and we've got a strong risk of severe storms. Tornadoes from Kentucky right on into Louisiana and Mississippi. Uh, you can see there's a line of showers and thunder build, and that's going latest weather. Katie? Okay, Al, thank you so much. With gas prices hovering close to $3 a gallon right now, it's no surprise that many people are considering hybrid cars. But there's just one problem. Good luck finding one. Here's NBC's Peter Alexander. Tom Cameron's 